So you go in here and you think, oh look, I got a red tomato. Then you turn it up. That's black on the bottom. And you see this one here, red, and then it's rotting on the bottom. Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. We are in Southwest Ohio. If you are not familiar with us, in zone 6A to 6B, 6A and a half is what we'll call it. Some people say 6A, 6B, whatever. We're in Southwest Ohio. And okay, if you're not familiar, we do a lot of small space gardening here. We have a basic half acre lot. We only use the back, the back half, so our backyard. The front yard is nothing but basic front yard. So we do all of our food grown in you know, less than half, less than a quarter acre, essentially. Okay, so we've been growing food for a long time. Uh, we started in an apartment uh, in, in the suburbs. <laughs> in the suburbs, we started an apartment there, growing food in containers on our back patio. I fell in love with growing tomatoes first. Okay, that's the first thing I fell in love with growing. And that hooked me on growing food of all kinds. And so we still love to grow a lot of tomatoes we plant we've planted 47 tomatoes right now we got some more ready we'll have like 75 tomato plants when it's all said and done this year and we just love growing them. we love growing all kinds of tomatoes so you know this is one of the things that is kind of kind of near and dear to my heart we'll say okay and one thing that we've, we've always liked to grow is roma tomatoes pasting tomatoes in general but roma tomatoes plum, plum tomato of some kind right and as you can see here, we got three of them planted. Three Roma tomatoes planted in this jungle of food, right? There's all kinds of stuff planted over here, sweet potatoes and, and, other, and other tomatoes and some uh, natapeno pepper plants and more Romas over here. See, look, they're looking great, right? Roma tomatoes are looking wonderful. Hey, look, one's starting to shade. A couple over here look like they're ripe, right? Wrong. See, with a Roma tomato, uh, they're a determinant plant, so they should all start um, shading and turning red at the same at about the same time. So if you start to see one that is shading and turning red when all the others are bright green still, none of the others are ready yet, then it's a good bet there's a problem. So you go in here and you think, oh look, I got a red tomato. Then you turn it up, and it's black on the bottom. And you see this one here, red, and then it's rotting on the bottom it can be a little disappointing can it but roma tomatoes and a pasting tomato in general but a roma tomato is um it's kind of susceptible to that it's uh, it's called blossom end rot so blossom end rot is what it is so it's the uh it's where the blossom obviously is it's a blossom end and it starts to rot so why is that there's a lot of different ideas some some people will tell you it's a water issue some people might tell you oh it's uh too much nitrogen or whatnot and maybe there are some varying factors 99% of the time it's going to be calcium deficiency. Maybe 95% of the time, but most of the time it's calcium deficiency, okay? And so calcium deficiency is, is a big deal for Romans in general. A lot of things we do to, uh, to combat a calcium deficiency in tomatoes, for all of our tomatoes, but especially Romans, is we'll, a lot of times we'll plant eggshells. We'll take our eggshells from our chickens and we'll, you know, as, as we use them, we, we'll wash out the eggshells. Some people will bake them. We'll just wash them out real good with scalding hot water, dry them out, and crush them up. We'll save these eggshells, and we'll put these crunched up eggshells inside the hole with the tomatoes. So that's eggshells are calcium. So that's kind of a long-term calcium thing. Uh, you can use bone meal. Bone meal is a big calcium additive. All right, so that, that's a big deal right there. Also, if you're looking for emergency, <laughs> if you're looking for emergency calcium, you can use Tums tablets. Tums are calcium. It's almost pure calcium. Uh, you may not be able to call it organic, um, but it is if you're in a, if you're in a hurry and, or need emergency calcium. It's probably maybe the the fastest available calcium. But that can be rather depressing, right? You see all that, and obviously there's only a few tomatoes like these look great. There's no there's, there's no issues. Just beautiful tomatoes, beautiful tomatoes, beautiful beautiful tomatoes. Look at that, awesome. But then back in here, you see there's another one starting to shade. I've already checked it. It's got bottom rot on it too. Bottom rot, blossom end rot, whatever. It's all the same thing, but um, it's it's not a good thing. And I picked it off there, and you can see, you know, it, it looks like it's a good tomato, and it doesn't feel squishy or anything. But obviously, there's 
bacteria rotting in there. Some people are going to tell you it's okay to go and try and salvage that. I don't recommend trying to salvage that. It um, There's too much chance that there's bacteria on up in that tomato somewhere, okay? And it's just not worth it. I mean, you're going to risk consuming some harmful bacteria for what? Half of a small tomato? It's simply not worth it. So just keep an eye on your tomatoes. That's one thing you can do as well. The first sign of it. You know, the first sign of it, you start need to, you need to combat it. We had a little bit issue here, and we, we could tell it was only on a couple. So we didn't, we weren't in too big of a hurry, but it does need to be taken care of before all all my tomatoes start, all my uh, Roma tomatoes start doing that, right? So it's um, something we gotta fix. As far as I can tell, these are the only ones that had any issues. And so it's not that many, just four off of, um, off of three plants. That's not that big of a deal. All right, so what I'm gonna do about that is while it doesn't look like it's a, a major issue, because most of these tomatoes, I mean, we've got dozens of tomatoes on these three plants most of them so all of them are good at this point while it doesn't look like it's a major issue i'm still gonna uh add some bone meal to it to uh, get the to, to make sure the calcium level is okay this bone meal right here is one i found at tractor supply it seems the, the easiest to get a hold of and you can find it on amazon i'm sure um, some of the more major organic fertilizer places like espoma um job's organics things like that they're gonna have they're gonna have bone meal too probably a little more expensive that was a four pound bag for 10 bucks at tractor supply you can i'm sure you can go to amazon find some uh if you have an ace hardware close by ace has a, a brand they carry called whitney farms and it's a it's a pretty good bone meal as well that bone meal is like a six eight zero bone meal so it's got a little nitrogen a little phosphorus and no and no potassium this bone mill is a 217. So it's got a little nitrogen, a lot of phosphorus, and no potassium. Again, it doesn't phosphorus isn't really what you're looking for necessarily. You're looking for the calcium, okay? Bone mill is a good source of calcium. Phosphorus is, is a is probably just a byproduct of having calcium, but at the same time, phosphorus is, is gonna be good for your plants and the root development and the overall health of the plant anyways. So it's just good to find a good, a good bone mill. Uh, that, I will tell you this bone mill here. I've used it on something else before. It's very powdery. Okay, so be care, be be aware that when you put it in there, and once you once you water it down, and like I'll show you in a second, then it might it might be a little dust come up. So you may not want to inhale it. It's probably not going to hurt you unless you got some uh, some lung issues or some breathing issues as it is. Uh, but it's just not fun to inhale it. I know the one at Ace hardware it, it's not that it's not like that it's it's sting it stinks a little bit but it doesn't it's not dusty um i will tell you by the way that some people will tell you to water them with milk i do not recommend doing that okay and it sounds like oh look it's calcium we need calcium that's that's liquid calcium we go straight in there okay i get that thought process but just be just be real about that you're putting a product that has to stay cold inside the dirt out in the sun it's gonna get hot do you leave your milk outside the fridge no of course not why is that it'll spoil oh hey okay so use some common sense a little bit maybe you're gonna put your milk out in the heat I it's probably gonna put some bad bacteria inside your dirt cause it to spoil cause it to create an odor possibly give your put some bacteria in the, in the dirt that you don't really want in your dirt there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria I'm not necessarily sure I'd want to be putting that kind of bacteria inside of my soil, right? So while I get the thought process of using milk to, to, for, uh, to water your plants for quick calcium, I don't recommend putting dairy in your, in your soil that's supposed to be kept cold, okay? So just understand that you're gonna see the information out there. I just wouldn't personally do it. But what I will do is I will take a little scoop. It's a, obviously it's an old measuring scoop that we don't use no more and just take it take it like that not even a really true measured amount just just a good amount and just take it and dust through here okay dust around your plant just put it down in there and after you do that water just water it in real good So while I'm finishing up watering this plant, I do want to appreciate. I do want to tell you guys thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate it. 
Again, my name is Jason. This is our Christian Homestead. We love you guys, and God bless you all, and goodbye.